synchronized swimming would be a combination of gymnastics, dancing, ballet, water polo, all of that kind of combined into one. Abby, you're going early on 5'7", you're going like 4'5". A lot of people think that they're touching the bottom of the pool when they're not, so they're treading water the, the whole time. I mean, it's, it's like sprinting while holding your breath and, and uh, a lot of people don't realize it until they get in the water and try it out. <laughs> Most people would say it's just floating in the water, but once you see it underwater, then you understand how much we have to work with our arms and our core to keep us afloat. swimming like in a swim team like five years ago and then in 2015 we were invited to a camp for her to attend synchronized swimming that same year Andrea was diagnosed with scoliosis 2015 was a very hard year for us we had just lost my son to cancer and um, just at the end of that year when she was diagnosed by the school it was just very hard for me our pediatrician sent her two x-rays when their x-rays came back he was like yes this is worse than I what I thought so he he sent me to Scottish Rite so Andrea has idiopathic scoliosis she was referred to us uh, I guess following a physical exam. She had x-rays done which showed a 23 degree lumbar curve. Uh, we know from experience this is managed very nicely by part-time brace which actually overcorrects the curve a little bit. It physically bends the patient into a more straight position. Yeah at first I was pretty scared that I'd have to wear it at school and then they told me, oh, you just have to sleep with it at night. And then I'm like, okay. And then the first week, I couldn't sleep with it at all. And then like the second week, I was like finally like used to it. So it doesn't really affect me. It also doesn't affect her ability to swim. Recently, I went to my first Junior Olympics. That was in California. I think I did pretty well for starting my third year. The most fun part, I believe, would be doing routines. Yeah, really, I've noticed a hindrance in her um, at physical activity. She's very flexible. When she first came, um, she had zero flexibility. So she's worked really, really hard um, to get her splits and to work on her back flexibility. Andrea hopes to one day swim on the U.S. national team something that makes her mom, a former swimmer on Mexico's national team, very proud. It's, it's amazing. I mean, it's just, I never thought one of my kids would want to do it. And when she came back, it brought me back too, because I'm a coach now with the team. Hello. Good to see you. How are you? Good. Today, Andrea is finishing up her treatment. Good. Well, I think we have good news. Ooh, all done. Yes. <laughs> I was like, yes. So yeah, she's clearly mature. Okay. The growth areas on the x-rays are closed. That's good news. So there's basically no change in the curve measurements. And then we can see on today's x-ray that the remaining growth areas that were there before have pretty much filled in. She's an adult. Okay. In a few months, she won't need the brace anymore and is free to keep swimming after her dreams. Yay! <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm very proud of her, very proud of her achievements, and it's really nice to see that, you know, the swimming legacy is staying um, in the family. We're treating children and adolescents, and we want them to grow up and have a normal childhood and development. When we can intervene in a less intrusive way, well, that's the best of all worlds, isn't it?